This is our story. The story of the Tamagami Anishinaabe and Kadaki Manon. In English, the deep water people and our land. It is about our struggle for recognition as an Aboriginal people with a history and a right to this land. Many people don't understand why we get special status, why we have a right to land or treaty money, why we should have self-government. Some people call it a native land claim. It seems to us it's more like a government land claim. Our people have inherited the land and resources of Lake Tamagami for generations beyond memory. And memory has preserved our culture and history since the beginning of time. Our people were never conquered by invasion. When the first settlers came over from Europe, we traded with them. At first, they were helpless without our technology. share our land. But when the settlers pushed us off, Chief Pontiac gathered together the warriors and captured nine out of eleven forts and demanded respect. Because of this, King George III proclaimed, We claim no lands but what belong to the nations who sold to us. We claim not a foot of the lands of any nations with whom we have yet held no treaties. These authentic papers will prove that no king of Great Britain ever claimed absolute power or sovereignty over any of your lands or territories that were not fairly sold or bestowed by your ancestors at public treaties. By 1880, they were logging without our permission down near the Montreal River. By 1901, the Ontario Forestry Branch declared this area a forest reserve. By 1906, the railroad was built through the White Bear family's hunting ground. By 1939, they enforced new laws which drastically affected our hunting and fishing. By 1948, the Murphy Logging Company built a dam and without warning, flooded out the Cat family in Diamond Lake. We wrote letters, we demonstrated, and we were ignored. For 109 years, our chiefs have fought against federal and provincial takeovers. In 1954, we stated our position. We have every right to live wherever we decide to live because the Magami Ban is in the same position as before any treaty was made. I am not afraid to say this because I know I'm right and you are wrong. All these troubles we got now will be put before the Supreme Court of Canada. A caution is a legal instrument which warns that land ownership is in question and freezes land sales until the question of ownership is settled. In August 1973, we registered cautions in the land titles divisions, asserting that the area in question is still Indian land. For five years, the province tried to have the caution lifted. On May the 8th, 1978, the Attorney General for the province of Ontario sued the Tamagami Anishinaabe in the Supreme Court of Ontario. 
On December the 11th, 1984, after 119 days in court, Mr. Justice Steele of the Ontario Supreme Court ruled that the Tamagami Anishinaabe had no interest or claim to the 4,000 square miles under the land caution. How can they tell us that we have no interest in the land? It was our interest in the land that caused the caution to be registered in the first place. I think caution is a good word. We must be cautious with the land and protect it, not only ours, but all of Canada. When we refused to give up our appeal, the province of Ontario offered to settle out of court. The Attorney General visited Bear Island to make us an offer. When uh, the white people came to uh, this part of the world many, many years ago, they were invited by your ancestors to coexist with them in this land. Indeed, in the history of Ontario, there has never once been a formal response to a land claim or another claim advanced by a band council to the government of Ontario. I would like to present you, and it's an occasion of some solemnity, with our offer, our response to your claim. After 109 years of requests and petitions, the Ontario government has showed up. We congratulate the government of the day for this initiative. It is a fact that this day would not have taken place if our people had given up. We will continue our direction to have our rights respected as distinct people and the rights of our children and our unborn protected as well. We refused the offer because it required that we give up the most important issue, Aboriginal title to the land. Gary Potts has been chief of the Timiaga Anishinaabe since 1972. One thing we see for the future is that the government must accept the fact that we are never going to surrender our homeland. The Timiaga Anishinaabe have been on this land for thousands of years. And for those thousands of years, we've exercised self-government over ourselves, our land, and the relations we had with tribes that are next to us. In the future, the main element of self-government that must continue is the fact that we are controlling what affects us on our land. Right now, at this time, we estimate that the governments are pulling in $10 million a year from uses made of our lands. We require land use controls to ensure that the land is going to be usable for our descendants thousands of years from now. With regards to the economy itself, we see ourselves playing a major role in new developments that take place in the future in our area, uh, we see ourselves not being just guides or contractors. We are see ourselves in managerial positions. We see ourselves as being the heads of businesses and providing work to our people in the area. Our struggle is not isolated to this obscure spot in Northern Ontario. 40% of land in Canada today is untreated and in limbo such as this. The Innu of Labrador with the Air Force testing, the Diné of the Northwest Territories with the pipeline, the Haida of BC with the lumber companies are going through similar situations. Native people of Africa, Australia, North, South, and Central America have all been swindled of their land, traditions, and history through colonialism. Oh. 
Our Mother Earth is a garden in the universe where each race of people has a right to self-determination, land and culture. The Canadian people will lose a great deal of knowledge and understanding if the history of our people and our right to the future is not recognized. This land belongs to our people. Some are living, some are dead, but most are yet to be born.